As usual, all my thanks go out to everyone, Alison, Joanne, everyone who makes the service possible, everyone who helps out, and everyone who does all I see the pancakes never getting burned before now, so definitely <laughs> after now. So thanks to everyone. And as usual when I'm doing it, the small service, as you see, will include a, a short informal communion worship. So let's begin with our call to worship. Come, sing praises to God, rejoice in his presence, for he is our God, a father to the fatherless and the defender of all who need protection, the one in whom the lonely find a home and the prisoner finds release. Bless the Lord, the God of our salvation, who sustains and strengthens us day after day. So let's worship God together. Let's worship in, the, in our opening hymn, hymn number 170, Give Thanks with a Great. So let's listen to the word of God. 
As a prisoner for the Lord, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But to each one of us grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. This is why it says, when he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gifts to his people. Amen. And thanks be to God for this, his holy word. Tell all the truth, but tell it slant. The poet Emily Dickinson wrote, suggesting that because God's truth and glory is far too bright, for vulnerable human beings to understand or receive all at once. It's best for us to receive and share God's grace and truth in slant, gentle, indirect ways. For the truth must dazzle gradually or every man be blind, she said. The Apostle Paul made a similar argument in Ephesians 4 this month that we read this morning when he urged believers to be completely humble and gentle and to be patient, bearing with one another in love. The foundation for believers' gentleness and grace with each other, Paul explained, is Christ's gracious ways with us. In his incarnation, Jesus revealed himself in the quiet, gentle ways people need in order to trust and receive him. And he continues to reveal himself in such gentle, loving ways, gifting and empowering his people in just the ways they need to continue to grow and mature, so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God, and become mature. As we grow, we become less vulnerable to looking elsewhere for hope and more confident in following Jesus' example of gentle love. But we can always strive for more, to be more Jesus-centered. And in these times of turmoil for the church, both locally and nationally, when it can become very easy for us to look to our neighbours and be less than humble, less than gentle, these words of Paul take on a renewed importance. If we believe the words of Paul and we are indeed called to be completely humble and gentle, are we truly being worthy of our call? Because <coughs> God has formed us as people. We are all Christ's church. We live in a society that has grown so used to being isolated, alone and fractured. How sweet it is to be united together. Church with church <coughs> with church bound in the peace of Christ. Because this broken and fractured world needs this gospel. So my prayer for us all this morning is that the Lord strengthen us as his church, as we open our arms to this lonely world, to our neighbours, with the unity and peace available only by the gospel of Jesus. Amen. I must admit some of that, that was rewritten after last night's meeting. Um, some of us were at Presbytery last night and I don't think many of us were proud of the way that a lot of the church had 
have been behaving recently. Um, luckily, we didn't see a lot of what people call misbehaviour in the meetings that we were at, but there seems to have been a lot of misbehaviour, a lot of name calling, and a lot of accusations made of people who, after all, are our brothers and sisters in Christ. And it made me think about it a wee bit. So, <laughs> after, well, maybe not after I come home, I must admit, and I went straight to my bed, I was tired. But this morning I had a wee think about it, and um, the churches surrounding us are the churches that we must work with over the next few years. Um, where and how, we don't know yet. But they are the brothers and sisters in Christ. And we, ha we have to accept that to some degree. Um, hopefully, over the next few years, um, the pain will lessen and will allow Christ to enter the discussions um, that, a, that a lot of us have left Christ out of in the past few months. So, as I said, we, we, we must be open um, and we must open our arms to our neighbours and a world that is very lonely with the peace and unity available only within the Gospel of Jesus. The table of bread and wine is ready, so come to this table. You who have much faith and you who would like to have more faith. You have been here often and you who have not been for a while. You who have tried to follow Jesus and you who have failed. Come. It is Christ who invites us to meet him here. Let's pray. Loving God, through your goodness, we have this bread and wine to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. May we know your presence in the sharing of this bread, so that we may know your touch in all bread, all matter. We celebrate the life that Jesus has shared among his community through the centuries and shares with us now made one in Christ and one with each other. We offer these gifts and with them ourselves a single, holy, loving sacrifice. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We offer you praise, Lord, and hearts lifted high for in the communion of your love, of your love, Christ, come close to us, and we come close to Christ. Therefore, with the whole realm of nature around us, with earth, sea, and sky, we sing to you. With the angels of light who envelop us, with all the saints before and behind us, with brothers and sisters, east and west, we sing to you and with our loved ones, separate from us now, who yet in this mystery are close to us. We join in the song of your unending greatness. Earth are full of your glory. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is our brother Jesus who walks with, with us the road of our world's suffering and who is known to us in the breaking of bread. And on the night of his arrest, Jesus took bread and having blessed it, he broke. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body given to you. In the same way, he took the wine. And having given thanks for it, he poured it out and gave the cup to his disciples, saying this cup is the new, the new relationship with God sealed in my blood. Take this and share it. Hear us, O Christ, and breathe your spirit upon us. 
upon us and upon this bread and this wine. May they become for us the body vibrant with your life, healing, renewing and making us whole. And as the bread and wine which we will soon eat and drink are changed into us, may we be changed again into you, bone of your bone, flesh of your flesh, loving and caring in the Lord. Amen. He whose table was open to all is now present in this bread. He whose word became friend and stranger offers friendship through this cup. With people everywhere, we affirm God's goodness at the heart of humanity, planted more deeply than all that is wrong. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please let us now share our meal. May we taste this mystery forever serve you in faith, in faith, in hope. <coughs> we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God, who power <coughs> working in us can do infinitely more. Than we can do or ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Let's join together now in our prayers for us. Blessed be the Lord our God for the love which you have shown us through Jesus Christ our Lord. In him who loved us as we are conquerors over hardship, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, and the sword. In the silence of abandonment and solitude, of sickness and death, pour out the riches of your blessing, that we may be ever more faithful to serve you and our sisters and brothers and that our joy to do your will be ever greater. We bless you and glorify you, for you listen to the silence of our hearts. You act within us with power, healing us and leading us to speak in the name of Jesus, your Son. Send us into the world to carry out your will and to break down the walls of silence which separate us. May we be witness to you, our only Saviour, being ever more united by one faith and one baptism. And may we grow in grace and grace. We're going to sing the hymn number 375, Jesus' name of all names. And we're not sure what version we have and whether we're going to sing it once or twice. So it's going to be yeah, a mess of the last time. belly, love handles or flabby yeah. arms. Then this discovery could save your life. According to a new scientist. <laughs>
May the peace of Christ go with you, wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Amen. Amen. And thank you for participating in the hope that we see you all again very soon. Thank you.